Well, it was bound to happen sooner or later, folks. Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the YDN cast. We're so sorry that it's been so long since we put out a new episode. Um, and even so, here at episode 8, we're still in a very limited capacity. Uh, I, of course, am Kyle Vivaris, and I am joined today by the one and only Mr. Nick Swank. Hello. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, it's been a little bit, but you guys so do it. Yeah, so it'll be a little bit of it'll be a little bit of a different kind of show this week, but we definitely wanted to make sure that we're um, getting some of our we're getting our content out there, so that way we can still be bringing you the latest in video game news. Of course, this is the YDN cast, which does exactly that brings you the latest in everything gaming related. Uh, most of these stories that we'll be covering today is for when we get to our news segment will be a little bit older stories at this point, but they're still worth talking about, and uh, I, I, at least in my opinion anyway. Um, but before, before we get into that, let's get into a little bit of housekeeping. First and foremost, thank you for helping us to reach 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. That really, really means a lot to us, and it helps us grow uh, a lot here on, on our channel and helps us to know that, hey, we're doing something here that's worth actually watching and listening to. So we just want to really want to thank you for uh, all of that. Um, second off, uh, we got if you're watching this on YouTube, did you know that we also have a audio only version of this podcast? That's right. If you uh, are tired of looking at our ugly mugs uh, or just want to take us on the go a lot easier with you, you can listen to the YDN cast over on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. Make it a lot easier for you. Don't forget to visit our website, ydnerd.com. Follow us on all of our social medias, at ydnerd. And, of course, as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and every other YouTube buzzword there is on all of our videos. All right. Swank, what have you been playing recently? Which is kind of a big question, considering the fact that it's been a few weeks since our last episode. Well, uh, in those few weeks, I... Uh... I started another playthrough of Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, and that's kind of died down a little bit with the release of Dark Souls. Dreams oh, consumed yeah. my last few days of gaming. Uh, yeah, as far as my thoughts on it, it's good. Uh, pretty Dark Souls. Not a lot's changed, but it's fun. Fair. I, I like the Dark Souls series, I think, from afar. Like my, I, I like watching other people play it. I like kind of the lore with it, but I like get me behind that controller, and I am just I'm garbage walking. Like it's 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 no it's no fun. <laughs> I get very angry. I'm trying to think of like the farthest I've ever made it was in the first Dark Souls. I made it to, um, the Gaping Dragon. That's that about that's about as far as I made it in the first Dark Souls game, and then I played a little bit it of Dark Souls. Get my yeah, the first and then the third Dark Souls game, I made it to. Oh, oh, what's the, what's like the second big boss that happens? Um, I am not very knowledgeable on three. Unfortunately, I've only played about twenty minutes of it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something of the Boreal Valley. I, I it's gonna kill me if I don't remember it, but I can't. Oh, um... not dancer. Vort. Yeah, Vort. That's what it is. Yeah, the giant ice monster. Yeah, I got to him, and that was about where I fell off. He's an ass, it's fair. True, true. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, no, other than that, I haven't really been playing a whole, whole lot. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing some more Pokemon Go. I know that's a... I unfortunately made the decision to re-download Pokemon Go the other day. I re-downloaded it. I opened it for about 10 minutes, and I was like, huh, this is still Pokemon Go. And, I mean, they added a whole bunch of stuff. They added stuff to it. But at this point, I'm just like, I don't know. What is... I, I don't go anywhere. I go, I go to work. I go to home, and I record this. Like, I don't go anywhere anymore. So it's like... <laughs> Because, like, when it came out, I was super, super into it because I was... It came out right as my family was going on a trip to uh, Orlando. We were driving from 
uh, northwest oh. Arkansas to Alabama, I think, and then from Alabama to Orlando. So I had like I was That's playing the, I was playing that like nonstop the entire time we were in Universal, and I was just like. You know, it's kind of it's kind of a bad thing when your phone is dead at an amusement park and you're trying to get in contact with your family. <laughs> All worth it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, Pokemon Go seems like it's gotten a little bit better, but I just don't know if I'll I'll probably end up redeleting it if I have to if I had to be honest. That's fair enough. I mean, if if you've got the the schedule to go out and actually make the best of it, it's it's pretty fun now. Uh, still present, but for the most part, it's a it's a playable, enjoyable game. Now. Fair enough. Um, Fair enough. I've definitely been getting an exercise with it. I think I started and hatched a five kilometer egg last night. So nice, nice. What'd you get? <laughs> uh, I already had that. wasn't worth it at all. I like immediately transferred it. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> not worth. Not worth. Something I already had. Yeah. Um, yeah, so any, anything else besides that? Uh, no, not really. I had power through Dark Souls before I picked back up my Alpha Sapphire playthrough. I did start playing Fire Emblem Fates again. I have yet to finish that. It's kind of a, I'll play it chapter, but I need to get through it because I know they're great. Right. I just haven't sat down and done it yet. Right. Uh, what have you been up to? Um, so lately, uh, obviously going through a big transition. Obviously behind me, this is not my the usual setup. I've uh, moved back uh, from Louisiana back to Northwest Arkansas, so I've been I kind of in a transitional place a phase. So I haven't played as much games as I want to. Um, I've been surprisingly something I I. I started playing the or actually i'll come back to that uh one thing i did play was i downloaded and played the demo for arms on switch and uh how is that i so so i had this idea of i want to try to start playing more demos of games because and like basically what a demo is supposed to be is supposed to be like an attempt by the company to sell you on the game right like this is like a hey get your hands on with the game and this is supposed to be like a slice to actually like get you hooked and play more so i thought it'd be a good idea to actually start playing some more demos and um i played the demo for arms and it's got me intrigued it was pretty fun from what i played of it which wasn't very long it's probably about 15 minutes total um (laughs) I mean, because it's, it's a demo, you know? You play through, like... I mean, like, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, there's probably not much of it. Right. Um, I'm intrigued by it, but I'm not going to pick it up because I know that it's one of those games I'm like, okay, I really enjoyed this demo, but I know that I'm not going to play this game for very long. It, it, yeah, that's... Go ahead. It just, it just has one of the, the like the feel of that like it's like I can tell from like the limited time that I played of it that it's like this is fun and this is for somebody, but this is not for me. Yeah, that's all of the issue I'm having with Dark Souls Remastered, I played the original version so many times. It's like, yeah, it's new, but it's not really fresh. You know? I've yeah. already gotten most of what I'm going to get out of it. This has been more so to go, ooh, that's really pretty now. You're right, yeah, right. Um, I, I can definitely... Ooh, def- that's a consistent frame rate. Right. Uh, but I can definitely see... Uh, what's the main character's name? Springman. I can definitely see him being a playable character in Smash. Because, like... Because, <laughs> like... Nin- I, I, I would almost be willing to put money on it, honestly. Because, like, Nintendo has still, like... Can, even though ARMS hasn't been, like, blown people out of the water... Like, Nintendo is still continuously trying to push ARMS, and they're trying to do, like, this invitational tournament and stuff like that. So it would not surprise me if you see Springman or it, Ribbon Girl in uh, Smash Brothers. Definitely, like, be feasible. I don't know. It's it's hard for me to try and predict what they're going to do with Smash, because with Smash 4, it's just... 
some of those character choices did not make a whole lot of sense, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, true. True. Um, so I played that. I um, have playing have been playing a lot more uh, Hellblade Cinema Sacrifice. And I'm probably, I've probably got like maybe about an hour left of that game. Um, really getting into the very you were, end. You were, you were talking about that game uh, last cast. Wasn't I think you? so. Was that the last, was the last episode the one that we had Dan on there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the last time I, uh, I, I've got a little bit of it left. I would say I probably have about an hour left of that game. That game goes some places, dude. It, um... <laughs> certainly goes some places it gets hella dark I, I play, i've played a lot more yeah. since since the time we talked about it on the last episode um man that that game goes some places like i basically so um the reason why i kind of got back in i, I kind of took a break from it for a little bit so i was like okay this game is really intense and it's get it makes me like really anxious playing it so i kind of want i just kind of took a break from it for a little bit um, but really what got me back into it is I actually, um, ended up watching a playthrough of, um, I ended up watching Jacksepticeye's playthrough of God of War, the new God of War game. And that's, you know, that obviously Ooh, that's, how's that? oh God, it was so good. Such a good story. It, even though I've watched somebody already play through it, it makes me want to buy a PS4 just for that game. Like, even though I've already watched somebody Dude. play through it. That, that, like, that should say something. I, like, there are some parts that drag, and it very much has a... There's a part in there where it goes from, um... Oh, we're sorry, but your princess is in another castle, basically. Like, little moments like that of, like... Oh, hey, you're almost to this point, but you need this item now. Oh, well, you thought you just needed that item, but you also need this item now. And there, and it kind of drags... That's probably about, like, three quarters of the way through the game. And it's, like... It, it still it still holds up. The storytelling is really good. The story overall is really good. The gameplay looks like it, it it works really, really well, surprisingly. And there's a lot of oh shit moments in that game. Um, I think yeah, that, what I've seen of it looks pretty good. I've been staying away from like full playthroughs. I don't get anything too major spoiled, but it, it seems like a really great game. Um... There's like so one of the things that I really love about the God of War games is that um, they do spectacle so well, and um, and that's what I really love about the God of War games. But this game does spectacle in a whole in a very different kind of way, in my opinion. I mean, like so in past God of War games, it's always felt like their version of spectacle and oh shit moments is basically like like look how big this thing that kratos is on or is fighting it like you know how big it is and that's like how it gives you a sense of like scale and and like full grandiose spectacle in that way yeah and this game does something uh a little bit different with spectacle and i'm trying to like trying to figure out how i can talk about it without like really talking about like like with spoilers here because i mean there is still one part where there is something like really really like there are multiple things that are really huge that kratos interacts with um but those moments didn't get me nearly as much as other spectacle related things uh i'm trying to think of a different word to use besides spectacle so so it's not the same word over and over again um but there is it's the first boss fight that you really get to in the game had me saying oh shit and had me more hyped than anything else in the original god of war trilogy that's awesome uh it's it is watching the choreography of that fight and i and i strongly encourage you like this is like within the first hour of the game and so it it, it is not spoiling anything by watching this it's not going to, but it will get you hooked and ask you and make you ask what's coming next for the story. It's like the very first boss fight. And I mean, if you want to look it up on, if you, if you want to look it up that you don't, you don't even know who the, the boss's name is. His name is the, he's labeled as the stranger. You find out who the stranger is later in the story. But if you want to <laughs> search up the stranger boss fight, or if you're like if you're like me and you like the uh, if you watch uh, the super best friends, I really like their let's play of it. Or if you want to watch uh, Jack Septicai's uh, let's play of it, I I, I recommend um, 
uh, super best friends playthrough, uh, specifically for that boss fight, uh, because there's so many fun moments in that. That that boss fight reminds me of a Marvel superhero fight. Like it, nice. it, it, it's so well, it's choreographed in, in a very similar way, and um, there's some very very cool like wrestling type moments that happen in it. So um, the new God of War is is very good. I, I don't don't sleep on that. Um, good. What, what was I talking about before God of War? Oh, so I had watched I had watched the uh, Jacksepticeye's playthrough of the new God of War, and so that got me really interested in Norse mythology because I don't know nearly not nearly as much about Norse mythology as I do uh, Greek mythology. So it got me really interested in it, and then of course Hellblade is steeped in Norse mythology as well. So I was like, okay, I'm getting back in this. I'm, I'm getting back in. And that game is very, very good. Like, don't don't sleep on Hellblade, especially now that it's on. It's also on Xbox One now. Uh, originally, it was only on PS4 and PC, but it's also on Xbox One now. And it's only 30 bucks, so nice. you, don't, you really don't have anything to lose on, on that. It's a very good game. It's, it's a shorter game. You could probably play through the entire thing in about uh eight hours or so that's not bad no no it's very good um so i think i think the like uh there's one game that i played that i can't really talk about yet because it's still currently under embargo um but the other game that i really got back into recently actually was uh super mario odyssey and that's been a while since i picked Mm, that game back up and i have just been like I don't know what it's, what it's been. It's like when I, I get off work and I was like, all right, I just want to chill for the next couple of hours. And so basically I'll just sit, pull out my switch, pull up whatever podcast I'm listening to at that point, turn that on. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to co- go collect some power moons. And that's what I'm doing for the next few hours. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember, I think I'm at like 338 power moons. So nice. I've, 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 I've gone through and I've collected most of the purple coin. Like I basically what I'm doing now is I'm kind of like sweeping up is I'm, I'm kind of going through each of the, uh, levels as you went, got to them and the original, like the original playthrough. And I'm just like, all right, I'm going to get all the purple coins, going to get all the power moons and just move on to the next one. Let's keep on. <laughs> That's just, how you do it. Yeah. Which, I mean, this is the most I've ever been invested in a Mario game ever so it's yeah, i'm so happy with ha- with super mario odyssey there's rumors that Good. there's that there's there's still rumors that they're going to be putting out a uh, dlc for it and they're going to be they might be talking about that at e3 i'm down yeah which is also a wonderful segue into our very first news story for this week yes uh so basically our first news story this week uh or for these last couple of weeks Two weeks, maybe, th- maybe multiple weeks. Uh, so there was a glitch that happened over on Walmart Canada's website that caused potential E3 leaks to happen. Spoilers. Can you spoil an announcement of a game? Is is that? Or it, I guess. I don't know. Like I'm not necessarily like, like I'm not upset that these games got like spoiled i guess or leaked it's just it's it's a it's a weird line you know it's um like kind of i I was listening to this on one of my uh one of the podcasts i listened to called um the chomp cast and they were talking about like Mm -hmm. what is the nature of spoilers you know is it are can you like can you spoil like a game announcement or is it more of a leak and it's just you know that it's going to happen it's I don't know. Maybe it depends on what game it is. I think it depends on the person receiving the information. Right. Or how they receive the information, I think, maybe, you know? Yeah. True. Because, I, mean, like, anyway. I mean, like, if they're clicking on an article that says that the game is coming, that, like, oh, this happened, and they click on the article, and it's like, okay, here's got all this stuff. It's like, oh, I can't believe they spoiled that. Like, there's there's no point in being upset by that. You clicked on the article, right? That's your own fault. Yeah, that, that's your own fault. Well, like, yeah. unlike something that happened to me uh, recently when God of War came out, 
I watched, like, uh, Giant Bomb put out, like, a video that's, like, the first hour of the game. I watched that, and, like, the first, like, 15 minutes of their Quick Look video that was a little bit farther into the game, and I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna stop watching this. This was before I watched the Jacksepticeye, um, uh, playthrough of it, and then all of a sudden on my YouTube Funny on my YouTube feed that was coming up, it was like major story beats. It's like, Hey, here's an HD version of when this part happens, like specifically naming the part. And I'm, I won't do that to, to viewers or for you or anything. Cause like that fucking sucked. I was like, dude, that's, that's like, what? That's just like, that's such bullshit. I, 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 I don't want, I don't want that in my life. It's an awful thing. It's like I had an Infinity War spoiler because of a uh, a recommended video notification on YouTube from an NLA. Damn. Yeah. I, I fuck the internet. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but so back to this story a little bit. Um, some of the uh, titles that were included in this leak, some of them... Um, some of them make sense. Some of them were a little bit more questionable. Uh, well, like one of them was Gears of War Five, which kind of makes sense. Gears of War Four came out a couple of years ago now, so a Gears of War Five is not necessarily out of the realm of possibility. And Gears of War Four is set up for a sequel. Uh, Just Cause Four, sure, that sound that sounds about right. Borderlands Three, that game has been in development for fucking ever now. Uh, and I can't wait. Uh, an assassin's, an unnamed Assassin's Creed sequel, uh, The Division Two, which has already been confirmed. That game got announced like earlier this year, I believe. Um, a new Splinter Cell game. That that's a that would be a new one. Um, and then uh, another really the one that was really confusing for a lot of people, I think, was Rage Two. Um, if you don't remember Rage, Rage was a game that came out from id Software uh, back in 2011, I believe. That was mm -hmm. basically, uh, of course, id Software being owned by Bethesda. Um, it's uh, Rage was basically kind of like a Mad Max game before the Mad Max game came out, is the best way to kind of <laughs> describe it. And it didn't, it was very polarizing. You either loved it or you hated it. Um, and it didn't sell mm -hmm. nearly as well as they as they projected it to. Um, so, and that was back in 2011. Hadn't heard anything really about it since. Uh, so Rage 2 is a really out there one to pick. But, um, I mean, then again... Yeah, I, I, I pulled up the full list. Other games on here are, the, of course, the Final Fantasy VII. But it's also listed for Xbox One on the Canada website. I don't know if that's been confirmed yet. I don't know if it has been either. Um, for for Switch, uh, Lego DC Villains, which I don't know how if that's legit or not. I don't know how I would feel about it if it was. I, I I'm down. I like the Lego DC games. I like the I I yeah. have I 100 percented the last two Lego Batman games, um, unashamedly. Nice. Not the Lego Batman movie, the Lego Batman 3 and Lego Batman 2. Uh, any other games on that list? Uh, what was that? Any other games on that list? Um, nothing super major. Uh, the Halo Fortune game, although I think that wasn't from the 3 uh, Let's see. Uh, w WWE's canteen was listed on there. NBA 2K19 for Switch. Oh, so, sport, uh, so sports games. Yeah, sports game. Dreams had already smashed on there. Yeah. So anyway, so some interesting Nothing ones. Super major. Yeah. Um, so I guess going Insurgency back. Insurgency Sandstorm. Yeah. I don't know if I know that one. Insurgency. Hmm. Anyway, but so I guess going back to uh, Rage 2, uh, not long after that leak happened, Rage 2 got announced. 
So that feels like it gives a little bit of uh, validity to to the leak. Um, it was kind of funny how they how the like the like announcement of it happened. Basically, Rage's official Twitter account took a screenshot of the Walmart listing and did a really funny like Photoshop of it with like basically MS Paint like pink style thing like shit like to put an arrow to it on like the because there was like placeholder box art on there that was basically like a white background that just said rage 2 and like helvetica font basically it is like basically like that and like pink writing on there it was like wrong key art and there's like an anarchy a on there and and stuff like that and then yeah and then, like, Bethesda's official Twitter account, went, like, replied to that. And it was like, come on, man. This is why we can't have anything nice. And then the... Yeah. And then the announcement happened. So, uh, watching the trailers for it, it looks interesting. It, it looks like it's going for a lot more Borderlands than Mad Max. Okay. That, that's kind of the vibe I got. It, it seems like more of a marriage of the two styles. It's funny because that's what the original Borderlands game was supposed to be. Right. It was a Max game. And like, you know, what if we did that but not serious at all? Right. Right. So and while we're at it, let's just stream Fall Damage because who wants a video game with Fall Damage? Right. Um. So yeah, so I guess uh, keep your eye out for more. I mean, E3 is coming up in a couple of weeks, um, which is a good, ex- which is a good segue. Say, into- uh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say I uh, expect to see more leaks. I feel like. Yeah, definitely. I uh, expect uh, more leaks. I don't think this is. I don't think this is it. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, that's a good segue to talk about, uh, I guess, uh, Your Daily Nerd and E3. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what our plans are for E3. Um, we definitely, I definitely, at least I definitely know, I still need to talk to the people involved with the YDN cast as far as E3 goes. We will be having E3 content up on the site, the YouTube channel, and the audio podcast feed. So there will be E3 content going up. So... Don't forget to tune in and bookmark us, share us with your friends. We will be covering E3, and we will bring you all the great news that you need to know about about E3. Because I'm so excited for E3 this year. I'm, I'm excited every year for E3. It's like my favorite time of year. Yeah. Um, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about actually kind of came out as a leak at first, but then... I, I, I don't know if it was a leak as much or if it was just kind of like like put out a day earlier than I originally anticipated. But this is something that I think is really, really interesting. And this is Microsoft's X, um, Xbox Adaptive Controller. Basically, yeah, this... Yeah, I... Go ahead. I heard something about it right when it got, I heard something about it like right when it got released and I saw that you posted the article in our rundown and I'm glad because I won't answer it. Yeah, so it seems like, so basically what the idea is behind the Xbox Adaptive Controller is that it is a controller designed with accessibility and players with disabilities in mind. Um, It's very, it's very, very neat. I, I, like, looking at it, it is um, basically um, a big, white, kind of, like, rectangular, like, looks almost NES style in, in shape. Uh, any uh, controller uh, in shape, but probably about probably about the size of a keyboard, like a regular computer keyboard, that has two big circular pads on it, a directional pad, a um, start or like a start and select button, and the Xbox button up above that, and then on the top edge of it is a bunch of three point five millimeter jacks where you can plug in those for any of the different buttons of the Xbox One controller. And you can plug in anything that would basically help to work with any of your with a uh, any mobility or condition that would cause you to not be able to use a regular Xbox One controller with ease. And so it, they've got a, some really really uh cool stuff out there uh kind of showing it. Uh it's going to be available later this year for about 100 bucks. 
Um, and I don't know. It looks like they worked. Um, I actually ended up reading that they worked with uh, Able Gamers to develop uh, the technology for the controller. Um, and then I also, I think I also heard that, uh, Microsoft has also, uh, Xbox has also said that, hey, this isn't technology that's just for us. If, if other gaming companies want information or want help building their own version of this, we're more than willing to share our tech and basically share how we kind of came up with this thing. So I think that's fantastic. That's awesome. That, that is, I think overall everybody wins with that. And I'm just... Like, you know, Xbox is not winning the console war, but they're doing some very innovative stuff with, I think, the things that they're doing. Like, obviously, that's just a good thing to do overall, but, like, some of their other stuff that they're doing, like, their their Play Anywhere thing is, is a very neat thing. You know, the fact that you can buy an Xbox One game and you can also play it on your PC. That's, that's a really yeah. cool thing that they're doing. The Xbox Game Pass, where you can all first party Xbox games are available day one on the game pass for like basically Netflix style, like gaming. Uh, they've got some cool stuff going. Like obviously they're, they're far behind in game sales. They don't have quite as big of a first party library as PlayStation does, but these other little things are not nothing in my opinion. They got the backwards compatibility thing for Christ's sake. No, I agree. Like, Microsoft is kind of falling behind in the rules, but as an entertainment company and as a gaming company, they are definitely still afloat. Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, speaking of uh, Sony... Go ahead. Yes. I, know, they, I was just going to say, I kind of like the fact that the console is as prevalent as they used to be, because yeah. as a PC slash Nintendo gamer, I've never really cared about the console wars fair so it's good to not have it be like the primary focus anymore i think I've, sony and microsoft are slowly like starting to just do their own i've never really been super into the console wars myself i grew up a nintendo and playstation guy but then like about in middle school i got my xbox 360 and kind of started i started playing xbox a lot more but now, as I'm older, now now that I'm more just interested in gaming in general, I'm like, I don't care what platform it's on. I just think it's all very neat. I want to play all of it. Uh, That's basically where I am. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Sony, uh, Sony has announced that it's ending production of its physical PlayStation Vita cartridges. Yep. Which... Honestly, I, I, I'm I surprised that it took them this long, to be quite honest. I like, I like the Vita, but on the worldwide scale, it was not meant to last. Right. I, I, I think at this point, like it makes sense that Sony's doing this. Most of the people who still play the PlayStation Vita use it as kind of an indie machine. Anyway, where they're downloading their they're it, downloading yeah. games onto it anyway, so it, it it makes sense that like they're ending physical copies of it, you know, so physical cartridges. Um, and it's uh, it's even interesting that they're even kind of still going with the Vita anyway because uh, like they're kind of you know they're it's kind of an indie machine, but even like the Nintendo Switch is really be it has become an indie machine itself, so it's. They got a little bit of a, a conflict oh, yeah. there. Without a doubt, the Switch is, if anything, part of what did it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Did you see, like, this isn't in the rundown or anything, but did you see that quote the other day from one of the, like, a Sony executive that said that um, the PlayStation 4 has entered its, like, sunsetting of its life cycle? No, I did not. Yeah, basically, it's like, like so, like one of those, like a, a Sony exec said that, and then people started immediately freaking the fuck out. But then it, it's more like it's like no 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 like what we mean by that is we still have we still have plans for at least like three years worth of stuff on the PS4. Um, we're not we're not that's not going away anytime soon. 
uh, the, uh, it's like it's funny because it's like part of it feels like this is like really like like wow like the PS4 just came out I can't believe that you're doing this already but then it's like nah motherfucker like PS4 and Xbox One have been out since 2013 it's been five years this is a typical life yeah, cycle of a system been a, yeah it's been a little while this generation of gaming is slowly coming to a close yeah, it's um. I think part of it has to do with the fact that we got those like mid life cycle system updates, basically, where we got the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, which are basically like yeah. the, the, they're the same console, but they're like basically just super powered, you know. And then the fact that we I keep mean, on. It's... Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, it's kind of like whenever the new 3DS came out, the first review I read of it ended with. The, uh, the writer of the article saying TLDR, it's what the 3DS should have been originally. And that's right. how I feel about the One X and the PS4. It's the console should have been originally. Right. Um, Either that or it should have been a new console entirely and they should have held it for a couple of years. True. True. But yeah, I mean, these, I these, these games, have, they, these systems have been out. Uh, I mean, like, the other thing I was going to say is like, it seems like we keep on getting new, newer and newer games that are coming out on both these systems that just keep on looking better and better and like keep on tapping into unlocked like different potential that hasn't been used before in these consoles. So it's it's really interesting to kind of see, um, like it's, it's it's so it's weird to hear that like oh we're probably gonna be set at sunsetting the PS4 sometime in the next few years because um, you're like. Dude, have you seen God of War? Like the look, just looking at the hair on Kratos's beard, like blow in the wind, like the like, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing to see hair actually look like hair, like the texture of hair to look like hair. What have you ever played Smash Four? Hair totally looks like hair. Mm-hmm. If by hair you mean a singular sheet of texture. True, true. Um, moving on to our next story. Uh, a Steam Link app has come to Android devices, but at this current point in time won't be coming to iOS devices. So basically, if you don't know, Steam Link is something that they had uh, was a physical thing for a while from Valve that allowed you to plug into your TV and basically stream from your PC onto your TV in your living room so you could play your, your computer games without having to hook up your tower basic, or your rig in the living room attached to your TV. So now, Steam Link mm -hmm. is basically the same thing. The Steam Link app will basically be the same thing, except it's an app on your phone, so you can play it do the same exact thing you're gonna have to so you'll be able to play whatever game you want on your phone still using like controllers yep. and shit like that um yeah it'll still use like your pc's processing power but it's just like a it's a stream to your phone from steam basically yep which is awesome i know people that have been doing it with some games like that one of my friends uses a screen share app to play RuneScape away from home. Yeah, definitely. But I think it's cool. Yeah, it should be it should be pretty neat. It's interesting they put out an update about this uh, about this story a few days ago. Um, Valve announced that the Steam Link app was actually rejected from the Apple App Store. Um, for, quote, citing business conflicts with app guidelines that had allegedly not been realized by the original review team. Uh, Valve, Valve said it's appeal to Apple uh, that the Steam Link app was similar to, quote, numerous remote desktop applications already available on the App Store, end quote, and that appeal was also denied. <laughs> Uh, Valve also said that we're quote, uh, quote, we're clearly disappointed, but we hope Apple will reconsider in the future. So. I can't say I'm surprised, but I hope that it gets worked through because that would be a huge opportunity for Apple. I'm just, re I'm really surprised that, that, that it got rejected. Cause I mean, like I said, like there are many, I feel like there are a lot of apps on the Apple app store that are like that, that 
will allow you to stream from um, one device to another. I guess yeah. you. I guess usually it's from your iOS device to to a device rather than the other way around. So who knows? Hmm. Who can say? Who uh, knows? Uh, real quick, can I get in a quick story that I found? Absolutely. I uh, mentioned a friend using a screen share to play RuneScape and it reminded me of an article I saw. IGN dated May 23rd. RuneScape Classic is sh shutting 17 years. Yep, I heard about that. Yep, Classic RuneScape shutting down. This isn't affecting the 2000. And set old school RuneScape servers or the modern RuneScape servers. Those are both still fine, and I believe RuneScape is still in development. But right. even though it is definitely an era. Definitely. That's gonna gonna be a little sad because of what it is. They're leaving it open, I think, until August 6th. So for any of you RuneScape Classic players out there, get your time in now. Yep. Get your RuneScape on. Everybody say bye to it at the same time. But then do the smart decision and move to old school RuneScape like you should have in 2007. True. True. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm done with that. I just wanted to get that out there. Oh, that was good. You like you saying RuneScape during that last story actually reminded me of that story. So I actually was about to bring it up myself. <laughs> good. Uh but mo help. moving right along into our next story, man, we, we have lots of news stories to cover this week. So, um, I know. Of, well, it's probably because we've been away for a few weeks, you know, news kind of stacks up. Um, so Cliff, B Cliff Blazinski announces that boss key productions is no more. Uh, if you don't know who Cliff Blazinski is, he is basically the mind behind the gear, the original gears of war trilogy. He was instrumental yep. with helping with that. Um, and then after the third Gears of War game came out, he left and he was like, all right, cool, I'm quitting games. I'm going to do something else for a little bit. And then uh, he came back to games when he announced his big pro. He announced the opening of Boss Key Productions and announced that their new game was coming out and it was this wonderful game that we know called lawbreakers um and if you know anything <laughs> about the tragic life cycle of lawbreakers after launch like it seemed like it was a pretty decent first person shooter it just didn't seem like there was anything like really like it didn't grab people i guess it just i guess uh, like it seemed kind of bland i guess like it um, went to, like, no players online on Steam, like, within, like, a couple of months yeah. after launch. Uh, looking at an article dated April 5th, 2018, uh, the numbers for Lawbreaker had nine players on PC in the past 24 hours, according to data from Steam charts. Jesus. When did that game come out? Does it have that so, in what was that? When did that game came out? Come out? Is that was that in the article as well, or? Uh, uh, it came out August of two thousand seventeen. Okay. Uh, it's got a that's not good. rating on Steam. I guess the yeah no. <laughs> that's not good. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think they went August. Yeah, like that's less than ten months later. It's yeah, not not even a year when, later, and it was dead. Um, <laughs> so after that, they were like, "Okay, cool, we're gonna do this new game called Radical Heights, and it's gonna be a battle royale game. Basically, it's like battle royale that was like super eighties themed. It was like kind of the theme, and that had a little bit more of a positive reaction to it, and it seemed kind of." popular but like cliff blazinski was like nah man uh here's like the here's the official statement that he put out on twitter uh he said quote 
Four years ago, I set out to make a world-class video game studio, and I hired some of the best talent in the video game industry. They worked tirelessly to produce quality products, and while we had our ups and downs, I like to think we had fun doing it. Lawbreakers was a great game that unfortunately failed to gain traction, and in a last-ditch effort, we or latched it last last ditch attempt we scrambled to do our take on the huge battle royale genre with radical heart radical heights which was well received however it was too little too late video games will forever be a part of who i am and i hope to make something new again someday however i need to i need to withdraw and take this time uh it, it, it's sad to hear that um i'm not really uh, like i like i like cliffy b a lot I don't like the way that this statement is phrased because it like th- th- there's more to the statement and it talks about kind of how he's going to take some time off and reflect. Um, but like, I mean, this is basically a statement about, about the company itself and it feels very focused on him. Like I, I, I love you Cliffy B, but like this is, it feels very like self-centered, which I don't think that was the intention, but that's the way it kind of came off. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I don't know a lot about the company. Uh, especially because didn't it say, didn't you say this isn't the first time he's done basically the same thing? No, I mean, like, I think last time he worked in games, the last time he worked in games, he worked at Epic and he worked on the Gears of War games, the original like, Gears of War trilogy. That was like his last foray into mm-hmm. gaming and then he was like all right i'm gonna take some time off and that's probably how he was able to recruit like some of these like like some bigger names and be- like some of the best like designers and uh engineers in the industry is because hey i'm cliffy b i worked on i worked on gears of war like let's go make a new game together that that and everyone was like oh shit yeah pretty much but I hope everybody at Boss Key Productions lands on their feet and is able to find a steady new job and recover from that quickly, because that sucks. Yeah, he did say they plan on keeping up the servers for Radical Heights for at least a little bit longer. Well, that's good. Yeah, so, I don't know, I guess some of the... Uh, employees are sticking around for a little bit, and it's kind of what that sounds like. But yeah, and hey, interesting. I I hope he straightens out whatever it is in his life he needs to work on and comes back soon because it's an emotional step back for him. Yeah. Yeah. Moving right along, GameStop CEO. Uh, Michael K. <laughs> Mahler has left the company after uh, three all, after three months of work for quote personal <laughs> reasons effective immediately. Uh, basically, nothing has been disclosed. Uh, apparently, it was a shock. So I hope everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess right now, uh, Daniel A. Mateo, uh, De Mateo, uh, the executive chairman of the board of directors for GameStop, will serve as the interim CEO until they find somebody else. Uh, I guess he's actually one of the co-founders. Also, yeah, he was also interim CEO after the previous CEO's death uh, in March, so in between the time period between uh, Reigns and Mahler. Yeah. So, man, that's weird. Like three months is a. Yeah. It makes you. It makes you wonder if if there's something, if there's something weird that happened. You know. Yeah. For it, personal it reasons. It is in fact questionable. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess. Uh, keep your uh, ears out for if. There happens to be any more information on us to maybe we'll he'll put out a book someday and we'll know why he left uh, GameStop. Maybe. Well, let's go ahead. On, let's see if anything else has come out since that article was posted. Yeah. Maybe they're no, trying. No. 
Maybe they were trying to give it, give him his salary was... and trading credit or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be uh, three fifty-seven. Oh, what if I wanted it in uh, cash? Oh, that'll be like a dollar. Uh, dollar twelve. Yeah, no, there have been no posts since May eleventh. I typed in that BEO steps down and found about nine articles from May eleventh, but nothing since. Interesting. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll be one of those things that we'll just never know. <laughs> I maybe like I like speculating what as to what it was like. Like you, you think maybe there's just like, like all right, we could pay you, but we could only pay you in Game Informer subscriptions. That's all. <laughs> that's all you can do. <laughs> like, please, I need, I need two I, twelve month. Please, I need money to survive. I need food for my kids. Did you mean Game Informer subscriptions? We've got food on the cover of this month's Game Informer. <laughs> Power to the players. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, God. I, I hope everything's okay with him. I, I hope I don't come off as a total dick with making these jokes. It's just it's just <laughs> fun to speculate sometimes. I'm going to find out that something really bad happened, is, happened and I'm going to be feel like such a dick. That, like, extorted out of the position. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God. Well, until then, we will continue me and former jokes. Yeah. Uh, so, going into our next news story, which has kind of got multiple parts to it, and uh, I'll actually piggyback it into another news story that's not even on the rundown, because both of these things have happened recently. So, we have the big reveal of Call of Duty Black Ops 4. You know, we've talked about it on the podcast uh, a couple episodes ago, ago about, like, the tease of it, of, of the actual like of the initials of the four on the like being four lines apparently that's fine that actually is like a that is actually a legitimate way to do roman numerals for four is four lines apparently it's just really old i think true yeah i guess so um but they did a big reveal event uh for black ops 4 uh they First of all, they confirmed that there is no single player's focused campaign, which really makes me Ooh. bummed out because the Black I Ops mean, campaigns not, are my favorite. I'm not surprised anymore. It just kind of sucks. I yeah. would like to have it. True. But for whatever reason, so it's the kind of the way they're breaking it out is that the multiplayer is going to have a f- more focused kind of bring in from their single player experience and apparently black ops 4 is set in between black ops 2 and 3 as far Hmm. as chronology goes so there's no wall running and not as many robot men kind of thing okay good yeah um but they showed off um a big uh portion a, a good amount of zombies mode for black ops 4 which is going to uh, ship with three zombies maps. Uh, and two of which are brand new, and one of them will be basically like an HD up-res of Mob of the Dead, which is the one that was on Alcatraz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and one of those one of those new zombies map, so you get to fight the zombies, you got to fight zombies on the Titanic. And that's just oh, no. really stupid, and I love it, honestly. Oh. Like, I want to be mad that they got oh, rid of my single-player campaign, but man, do I want to fight zombies on the Titanic so bad. I, in fact, do want to fight zombies, and if that's the trade-off we get, then damn, but I'm going to make the best out of it. Like, one of them is fight, you fight the zombies on the Titanic, and the other one is, like, you fight zombies back. Like, you time travel, like back to like the roman coliseum and you're fighting zombies in a roman coliseum <laughs> i don't know if that means that you're using Jeez. like what even is i don't know if that means that you're like like if it's like you're using like swords and like flails and like morning stars and shit but that's kind of like guns still guns. D- nope still guns okay fine sure <laughs> whatever <laughs> 
Give me my Black Ops zombies. Uh, <laughs> Jesus fuck. Uh, so obviously they showed off a lot of their multiplayer uh, game offerings, which are very, very similar to what they've always been. But then, of course, they all also showed off their mode that they're calling Blackout, which, of course, is going to be their version of the Battle Royale mode. They didn't show off any gameplay of for course. it. They put out a cinematic that basically owned it. They were like, we know that you like Battle Royale, but they're, we're going to do it the Call of Duty way. That, that's basically the summarization of what that video is that they put out. It's like, we're, like we Jesus know you Christ. like Battle Royale, so we're going to do it too. It's basically what that video ends up sounding like. It's, it's, it's kind of pretentious, honestly. And what like, the hell, Activision? There's a part in the video, there's a part in the video where um, they're like, we're going to be using the biggest map that Call of Duty has ever offered. That's almost, that's almost 1,500 times the size of Nuketown. And, and it's like, oh, okay, but like Nuketown is a really small map. So like, but I guess some uh, somebody did the math because of course they did. And uh, went on Nuketown and measured out the paces of Nuketown all the way around to basically get you like basically get you a rough estimation <laughs> as to what size the map was because the fucking internet, man, it's so fucking funny. Holy hell! But basically, uh, what this map will basically this map will basically kind of come out to about the size of the Fortnite map. Is is about is kind of what you're looking at, uh, and it's gonna offer uh, land, sea, and air vehicles, which is very interesting because Call of Duty doesn't usually do that in their multiplayer. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'll I'll be interested to see like what how combat ends up kind of working in that. Um, I heard that like yeah. like one of the main difference. So I mean. Everybody kind of knows if you've played Call of Duty before that, like, um, how combat works in there is, like, if you're getting shot and you're close to death, you, like, hide, crouch behind something, you wait for a second, and you heal back up as 100% kind of health. That doesn't really work in the Battle Royale genre. So, like, they've kind of changed the, like, the healing mechanic on this game. So it's not like a, um, it's not on, like, a timer anymore from, like, not taking uh, damage. Like, L like your L one left bumper button that is your heal button, but it's on a cooldown. So once you use it, you can only use it for like after a certain amount of time. So it changes it up a little bit. So it makes so. I mean, I guess. So if it's if it's a consumable like that, and you can only use it once you hit the left bumper, or like once you pick one up, it makes sense that they could work a little bit better in the battle royale scene anyway. Yeah, I mean, I guess it sounds like it would work. It's not what I would have done, but it sounds like a feasible solution. Yeah, I, I'll be interested to see kind of how that goes. Um, I was gonna say something. I, I'm interested to see like like how it, you think. Like, there was a there's a couple of podcasts I was listening to where they were basically like suggesting that maybe one of the things that you could do as a pickup in the in the uh, in blackout could be instead of picking up like a weapon or something you're picking up like perks along the way like pick up like cool i just picked up martyrdom or something like something stupid like that's like sleight of hand yeah i mean i could see it that, i think that could work it'd be neat yeah i'd definitely be interested definitely uh um, until october 12th that's when we'll know Shit, I'm sure we'll 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 hear more about that coming up in E3 in a couple weeks. I would I would venture to say that we will he we will hear about it soon. Uh, but that also kind of that kind of also rolls into another news story that sorry Swank is not on the rundown, but talking about oh you're good you're good talking about Battlefield Five because that reveal also happened recently. Yeah, it did. Ooh. And that game looks pretty damn good. It looks... I cannot wait. See, I'm not a big Call of Duty guy, but I love Battlefield. See, I... 
the only battlefields that I've really gotten into were the bad company games. Um, but, uh, I, I can appreciate how, like, I can appreciate the battlefield fandom. Like I can, I can understand why people like it. It's just besides bad, it's, bad company. I, I've ha- had a hard time getting into them in comparison to call of duty. Yeah. Uh, you definitely, I don't know. Hmm. Battlefield is more fun, the more competent there, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And that goes for, like, yourself as well. Battlefield's definitely one of those games that's more fun the better you are. And that's not to say I'm good at it, because I'm not. But. <laughs> True. True. I don't know. I'm excited. Battlefield's awesome. Yeah. So this is what we've we've got so far as far as like Battlefield Five and what they revealed for it. They've revealed and announced that Battlefield Five is going back to, is going to World War Two, uh, which mm-hmm. I wish they would have called it Battlefield Two, because after Battlefield One with World War One, you should call it Battlefield Two. You should call the battlefield about World War Two Battlefield Two, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Uh. There's not going to be a premium pass on the game. So, like, all the expansions will be coming out for free. Uh, there's a single-player campaign that will follow the same model as Battlefield 1 that will be basically telling war stories from different, like, vignettes in the uh, in World War Two. Okay. So, that's pretty cool. Um, going to have your usual multiplayer mode. And then they're going to have their, of course, they're going to have their own, oh wait, hold on, getting there, hold on. Uh, There's a new game mode called Combined Arms. It'll allow up to four players to take on cooperative raid-like engagements with multiple objectives. It will feature a press-your-luck format with the final objective being the most difficult. Squads will have to make a decision if they want to attempt the final objective or if they want to extract with what they've earned so far. That seems neat. I'm down. That sounds awesome. Uh, and then the other bit, new big game mode is called Grand Operations, which this one is kind of a alternate take on the Battle Royale, in my opinion. It, it is Battle okay. Royale light. It's, it, it's kind of got some elements of it, in my opinion. Uh, Grand Operations is a massive 64-player engagement that will play out over three or four individual matches. Each match represents a different, non-contiguous day in a fictional battle. The first day might see one side attempting to defend several artillery guns and the other side trying to destroy them. Depending on how many artillery guns survive the first match will will influence the balance of forces in the second match, and so on. If If the third match of a grand operation ends in a draw, a final sudden death match will be triggered where every player has only one life to live. Each grand operation is expected to take about an hour to complete. It's it's like it's a it's it's that last one life to live in the in the in the sudden death match. I guess that is my kind of takeaway that makes it feel slightly battle royale-ish. Yeah, that that's huh. I like it. That sounds really cool. Uh hmm. I don't know. I really have made a lot of that other than that it sounds like it's going to be interesting as hell. Yeah. Um, they've said that uh, there's not going to be really any loot boxes in it, and the only ones that they really will have in there are going to be more uh, aesthetic and uh, cosmetic-based items. So it's just all all what you look like. Um, obviously, we're going to find out more about it at E3, and... You know, I think both Call of Duty, uh, both Black Ops 4 and Battlefield 5 had a, have had a pretty good showing so far. Like, no, with I, like with their reveals. Actually, yeah, no, I agree. Especially for, like, they both seem like they're going to be fun to newcomers, which is always good. Yeah, definitely. Now, the thing that will really throw it in a loop is if at E3 we get announced, okay, we got Titanfall 3 coming out this year, and then that throws another loop into all of it. Jesus. 
Dude, did you play Titanfall 2? I did not. Oh, dude. It was so, so good. It, it's, like, the, the story by itself is, re- is a ver- reason to play the game, but the multiplayer is also very good. Good. Definitely. So that wraps up news for this week. So next, we'll just kind of flow into our final rotating segment. Uh, Again, as always, if you have a question you want to propose for the Mysterious Weekly Rotating segment of the podcast, you can go on over to ydnerd.com slash contact. That's ydnerd.com slash contact. Swank, what was that link again? ydnerd.com backslash contact. And, of course, the question for this week, something that I had been thinking about a little bit, and it got me wondering. Swank, what is a game that you disliked that you want to give another shot to? Okay, I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, And the one that keeps coming to mind, I don't even say I disliked it. Uh, Uh... I disliked one of the or the primary mechanic in the game, and that was Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Mm, yeah, I love, love the guys. I love the overall story, and that goes for Chain of Memories as well. But the card mechanic, when I was younger, I just it wasn't fun. I ended up just watching a playthrough of the game instead of actually playing it. But I really. Can't and the one in that authentic, yeah, I've played every game in the Kingdom Hearts franchise feeling. Right. And I need to play Chain of Memories in order to do that. So I'm either going to stuck it and deal with it, or I'm going to find that I don't hate it as much as I used to. We don't know yet. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. I played through Chain of Memories when I was, uh, like, when it first came out on Game Boy Advance, and I was too young to realize that what I was doing was hard. Um, and so I played through all of it. Um, and I wasn't a, f- I don't remember hating the card mechanic. It was just annoying, and I didn't understand it nearly as well. And I wasn't able to. I probably, if I played it now, I'd be a lot better at planning out the decks and being like, oh, this this combos and synergizes well with this. I'm just like, I just want to do where the one where I summon Aladdin, or something like that, you know, or summon Simba. <laughs> oh God, I feel that. Uh, I just. I don't know. I can give it another shot. And I also played it on Game Boy Advance. That might have been part of the problem. Mm. Yeah, probably. But, uh, I, I've heard that, that game come out on. It came out originally on Game Boy Advance, and then it got an up res and kind of a rework uh, for PS3 and then PS4, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. So, hmm. I'll try and pick it up on one of those. Yeah, definitely. Maybe you'll find an, like find an emulator of it. Yeah, true. Good inspiration got good reviews, which makes me think that I just hated it. Yeah, it it's just very different from what Kingdom Hearts normally is. Yeah. True. Uh, for me, yours. for me, this so this is a little bit hard to admit. Um, I like, I like the story of these games and I like the concept and I like the far out nature of these games, but I don't like playing these games themselves because, okay, I'm just going to say it. I I need to give the Metal Gear Solid games another shot. I, I like, I like the story a lot because it's so far out there and Kojima is out there. Um, but the Metal Gear Solid games themselves, I don't really like stealthy sections of games, like most of the time, and that it is one giant stealthy section, basically. Yeah, I can say the same for myself about the Dishonored games, pretty much for that exact reason. I want to like stealth games, but I'm bad at being stealthy. Uh, you see, like Dishonored is another one. Yeah, I got Dishonored is one that I would put on. Uh, Dishonored would it would be one that I would also put on this list of like, man, I hear so many good things about this game, but like I played like at least the first half of that game, and I was just like, man, I cannot get into this. Like this, I 
if uh, that game always felt to me like it was trying to sell you on the you have your own way that you can play this game but it was more like well really we want you to play it stealthily because if you do it in open combat you're gonna get fucked we're gonna punish the fuck out of you exactly exactly so i don't know i like i dishonored i really wanted to like uh maybe that's another one that i'll have to try i used to be that way actually about the about destiny I really wanted to like that game at first, and then so I gave it another shot when uh, Destiny Two came out, and I actually ended up liking it a lot more when I really wanted when I got back into it. So I don't know. I'm much I'm much more so of a liking people or liking to watch people play Destiny than I am actually playing it. Yeah, that's fair. I, I actually thought about getting back into Destiny when like these new expansions were coming out. But these new expansions like did basically nothing for the game that I thought that it should. So I was just like, no, you know what? I'm going to save my time and my money. There's no point in me getting back into this right now. Fair enough. True. Let us know in the comment and section below. That's mine. Let us know in the comment section below as to uh, what game you dislike that you're going to try to give another shot to. And then if you do, let us know how that goes. Did you hate it even more the second time, or did you actually come around on it? But I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of the YDN cast. Nick, thank you for being here with me on this. Always. Always. Uh, I mean, hopefully next week our, our other compatriots will be able to join us. But this was fun. Yeah, definitely. And uh, from here on out, you will be getting consistent YDN cast. Uh, even if it has to end up just being me or me here and I will rant to myself about the news and video games for the course of like an hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> if that has to be the case, fuck it. That's what we're doing. But you're going to get a new YDN cast every week or else my name isn't Kyle Laveris. Which it is. So we're going to. Which it is. So. Of course, this has been the YDN cast, your number one spot for all things video game news. Uh, like always, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with all your friends. Tell everybody about us. Make sure that you watch everything because we put out awesome stuff. Um, and until next time, guys, have a good week. Bye, guys.